to the madhouse. This is a tutorial for the top cop, a move in which you are able to cop the top playing card of a deck all in one hand. It's devilish, it's devious, it is beautiful. If I don't mind saying so myself, Charlie, you're gonna love practicing this one. By the way, check this out. Levitating Christmas tree. What else did you expect? Actually, I expected it to be a hell of a lot bigger than that. That's what he said, Charlie. Go back to my last video, uh, Sleight of Hand Exposed. The video starts with me straight up exposing a lot of Sleight of Hand techniques just to kind of showcase how beautiful Sleight of Hand really is. This is the start of a new series in which I'm gonna teach everything that you saw in that video. Go back and watch it, everything that you see, I'm gonna teach it in great detail, starting with this, one of my favorite slides of all time. Get yourself a deck of playing cards. I'm Daniel Madison and this is a tutorial for the top cop the top cop is a powerful method for copying the top card of the deck into an otherwise apparently empty hand and it all happens in one hand and it happens right in front of your participant your spectator your audience if you know me well enough if you know my performance and teaching rep repertoire and reputation then you'll know that i'm obsessed with the gambler's cop one of my biggest secrets is the fact that my fingers can stretch beyond the reach of a normal hand because I stretch my fingers to a point where it becomes second nature for them. And my daily routine is very simple, it doesn't take long and you find that after maybe a month of doing this that your fingers can do things that other magicians are unable to do. Like when I do certain slight of hand techniques over my career I've had that question like how the hell do you do that? How the hell do you, does your finger even reach that far? And to me, I think the answer is quite obvious, but for some reason, people don't think sleight of hand artists and magicians, the hands are the most vital part of your body when it comes to magic and sleight of hand. So you have to look after them, you have to take care of them, you have to exercise them. But more importantly for us, for sleight of hand techniques and for everything I'm gonna teach you in the coming videos, you need to have stretchy fingers. Here's my routine, take your hand like this, put it inside this hand like this, in between those two fingers, keep these fingers dead straight, relaxed and then push your hand inside like this looks very strange and it's a very weird thing to talk about i don't think i've ever gone into this but i do this until it's really painful we want to get a little bit of pain going on and after a while you leave it there until it's kind of not unbearable but i'd say about 20 seconds then we're going to move into here do the same thing and then into here do the same thing this one has been the most valuable the most important exercise for having stretchy fingers. After a while, your fingers have managed to reach and stay in those weirdly odd positions that a normal person, like if you tried it in comparison to this, you might find that your fingers don't reach as far. A few of the ideas that come to mind, including this one, which is it requires quite a stretch of those fingers. Another one um, would be the Mad Tenkai Steel, which requires finger three of the right hand to stretch beyond its normal capability, which kind of looks like this. So we take finger three and we pull the bottom playing card to the side, and then finger three now has to stretch further than it should be able to, all the way down here, where I can clip it between my thumb and my clunge. Like a normal hand wouldn't be able to do that. You need that exercise to be able to clear the deck in this way, unless you've got really big hands, strikingly big hands, which, um, bravo if you have. Being able to kind of secretly do what shouldn't be possible to do it is, it is a big secret for magic in general. Um, so looking at the, the top cop, we hold the deck like so, which is a clip. So finger one right at the top, thumb right at the top of the other side like this. So the deck can be gripped and handled like this. We're gonna use finger three, and finger three is gonna move up to join finger one. So finger two has to kind of move out of its way, but we, we don't wanna form this habit. We don't want to flip the bird right from the beginning. We just want to move it slightly so that we can create this situation. So fingers one, two, and three in a cluster. I like that word, Charlie. Cluster. Now finger three has to curl on top enough to get a purchase of that playing card to, to kind of get enough grip on it. The pinky now needs to move out of the way too. So I'm going to slowly move that down to the side. We pull down like this. And as it clears fingers one and the thumb, you'll find that it naturally starts to go 
over to the right of the deck over to the side of the deck anyway and we slide to the side like this now we we're going to release the pressure we don't want any pressure on that playing card if you put pressure on that playing card you're going to force it underneath the deck like this which leads us to a different slide which we're not going to talk about in this video so it's from here up here press down down now we go to the side as it's coming to the side the rest of the work happens at this point with the deck with finger one and the thumb so I'm now going to pivot and I'm going to push my thumb forward and pull my finger backwards causing the deck to tilt and twist like this and you can see what happens with the top card now. We need it to get past the deck all the way into this position. Now if you look carefully at the position of this top card, as soon as I c close my hand, as soon as I grip my hand now, that card has got no choice it's going straight into a gambler's cock because we already did the work to begin with all i've got to do now is close my hand like this and i'm in a gambler's cop underneath the deck and it all happened with one hand when i say we've done the work first this is why we pull the, the card downwards if we just focus on pulling it sideways which is almost impossible to happen because we've got finger one and finger two in the way if we pull it to the side it's not going back far enough and we're causing ourselves complications like this which is no good. And bear in mind, we're, most of this time we're gonna be performing for an audience that's kind of looking onwards, so they don't wanna see anything here. So as far back as it can go is probably the best, uh, probably the best guidance. So obviously don't try and go all the way down and do this. We're, we're asking too much, uh, or we're creating too much movement by doing that. The idea is to achieve this with the, the least amount of visual movement possible, which is kind of impossible, but we'll get to that. Let's focus on the move for now. So we're here, 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 here. And that is the top cop, the mechanics of the top cop. When this card clears finger one and the thumb like this, lose your pressure immediately, immediately on finger three. Don't try and spin this deck all the way over here. And don't, don't do this whole robot body movement that, that you, you're gonna kind of feel like you need to kind of do this and let gravity help you. Gravity does help you. But we don't have to do too much work because we're already working with gravity as it is at this position. Now, getting that card past the deck underneath is a mixture, is a marriage between the deck and then fingers two, three, and the pinky. What I mean by that is the deck isn't being pulled this way completely and this card isn't being, completely, being pulled away completely this way. They're both moving, moving equally apart. It's kind of like a scissor. You're almost doing a scissor cut with a single playing card, but that card is freely. It's like, if I turn this upside down, it's gonna fall. So what I mean by that at this point, both hands, both fingers and my thumb are gonna stretch open. The hand is gonna open, allowing that card to fall like so. This is the position we're aiming for. So that it's behind finger two. As soon as we know that it's cleared finger two, finger two goes back to the deck followed by finger three, and then the card curls into a gamble's cop. In this position, we're ready to do whatever it is we're gonna do with this live hand, which would usually be taking the deck and then taking the card away like this. And look how much of a, of a perfect position it's in. Like, we don't have to adjust anything. It's not too far forward. It's in the perfect, the perfect position backwards underneath the deck. Now, the biggest challenge that we have with this is that it's not really a subtle move when we study it in the open outside of its intended environment which is a, a deception it's a very big move a lot's happening because the the hand is fully opening a card is moving it's not even being pulled or curled under it's kind of shifting to the side and then under the deck there's a lot going on so when we take a look at that it, it can be quite daunting and scary to think i'm not going to be able to do that in front of an audience i'm not going to be able to do it there's too much going on Fear not, fear not. The, the important part when you learn a slide like this is to find the right timing to use it, the right place to use it. Obviously, you wouldn't do this right in front of somebody like this, right? You, you wouldn't do that because they're gonna see that there's movement. Everything in sleight of hand and everything in deception has to kind of work as a story and every slide has its place. It's all about timing as it is with every slide of hand technique. And this is one of those moves that, or one of those these slide of hand techniques that requires a kind of a, a pacing performance. Um, it, it has its place in a performance rather than just being a slide of hand 
uh, move, which it looks beautiful when you practice it and when you're showing yourself and, and, and you're getting good at it. It's a very satisfying thing to, to achieve, but putting it into a, a performance is a different story, but it's very easy. We're not gonna talk about, there's, there's a big difference between misdirection and the direction, the, the purposeful uh, intent, the direction of attention. Uh, misdirection is, oh, look over there, and then doing a the move. Um, it's a very different thing when, you, when you're controlling somebody's attention and the only way that it can make sense and can be justified a slide like this is by having something to work around like a story so um, I got this Hamza poker chip just gonna use this as a quick example this is something on my table um, perhaps I'm gonna show this top playing card show it on top and then I'm gonna get in position as I'm talking about this poker chip now I'm ready to do the top cock um, I'm gonna hide the move with this arm moving this poker chip. A very easy idea, like this. I moved it over there and then I put the deck down next to it and I sat back and meanwhile I stole the top playing card from the deck using the top cop. If we just break that down and move backwards and see why that worked so well. If I did that without the movement, then you see everything. Obviously you see everything. The movement is doing two things. I'm, I'm intentionally taking something, an object, in this case a poker chip, and putting it diagonally across myself. I'm gonna line it up with my shoulder. If we do the card face up so you can see, I move this from here. I aim for it to be perfectly lined up with my shoulder. Look where my arm is. It looks very natural. It doesn't look like I'm hiding it. It just looks like it's kind of the side of it. You can still see the deck. As soon as I know that there's some shade over that deck, then I do the move like this and then come back and i'm not rushing that that technique i'm not rushing the slight here i'm doing it in time with my with the movement of my arm so i'll do that at some kind of speed i got here move the poker chip here put the deck down next to it sit back and i take my playing card this isn't a technique because like if i move that that you want to buy yourself time with i've, I've seen this in practice when, when i've taught i've taught this in lecture notes i've taught it at a few lectures uh, i've taught it personally and um, the one mistake I see happens at this point, at this point with the cover up, which is taking too long in fear that you're not going to be able to get that card underneath fast enough, which causes you to one, slow down with this arm and take as long as you can, two, speed up with this hand to try and get it done quickly. But it doesn't work like that. You just bring complications by doing that. So it has to happen like a, a marriage. Don't go too slow so that you can get moved on. And this is the, the problem I've seen. I'm trying to mimic it, which looks something like this. Like like doing the move, moving the thing and then doing the move instead of doing them both at once. That That's kind of, I think that's the only place where you're going to make a mistake when doing this. Um, obviously, I'll just leave that there. Um, obviously, when you're doing this, when, when you're practicing, it's easy, just like any slide upon technique, to be always looking at your slide. A, a huge piece of advice that I can give you with any sleight of hand when you're practicing don't always look at it don't be staring at the sleight of hand if anything the mirror is the best thing to do because if you're always watching your sleight of hand looking down at it like this when it comes to the moment some kind of nature will take over when you're in front of your audience when you do the move you're gonna go and you look down I've seen it happen I've seen it happen so bring it into your practices the idea of not even looking at your slide see them in the mirror instead of seeing them in front of you because that's the only perspective that really matters now moving the poke chip which is just one example if you're gonna be stood up or if you're gonna be without the table there's always people around when you're performing so the control of this is to have somebody uh, this side of you in line with your shoulders this is a good way of thinking about it this is a line that you have to meet to be able to cover this up. I mean, look at this gesture of just pointing over here and, and, and while you're talking and moving around, make it a conscious effort to talk about somebody over here. Look at the shade I'm putting over the deck in the minute. So this could be a matter of showing that, showing the card king of diamonds on top and then pointing to somebody or, or gesturing to somebody on this side. It shades everything. We're talking about a person. We're talking about their involvement and we're looking up. So nobody's looking down. Meanwhile, we're able to steal the playing card. If you introduce another playing card, you show them both on top, king of diamonds, king of hearts. Hold on to the king of hearts for me. You hold on to the deck, put the king of diamonds in the middle of the deck. And meanwhile, we've already stolen it from the deck. There are two, two important things that I just can't leave out of this video. One of them is cutting the deck to a table. Cutting the deck once, so completing the cut, is the perfect cover-up for uh, doing the, pop, the top cut. When I take the top packet and put it here, people follow the action rather than the, looking at the, at the deck. This looks like the moment, especially when you show them that the, their card is on top and 
this would be all about this playing card so the king of diamonds on top so now i'm going to cut the deck and just as i go to cut the deck as my hand comes over this is going to offer shade so that is the top cup cut so king of diamonds here now i do the move when i'm cutting here now they think it's here so at this point when i put the deck down it is helpful and useful to push that card forward and then take the other packet and go like this now look at this everybody's paying attention to to the cutting packet and me going down to put the rest of the deck on top of the king of diamonds meanwhile the king of diamonds is all the way over here when no one's looking so it could be in my pocket it could be passed on to somebody who's secretly helping me or it can be just held out for use later it now looks like that card is in the in the middle of the deck it's a beautiful convincing and we're free to do with the king of diamonds with this stolen plan card whatever the swear word we choose now i want to wrap this up i want to end the top cop tutorial with a wonderful thing about the move once it's in a palm that you might not realize this a real a beautiful convincer if we get the card into a gambler's cop in the same way and i turn the cam the, my hand to the camera that card is pretty much completely hidden from sight from this angle so i can fall to move my hand around like this obviously i have to be careful of tilting it because that card comes into sight from certain angles but from many angles there's something very valuable and very kind of useful i think about being able to see in that window and not see anything so king of diamonds i'll put it face up and we'll go straight into the move like this and put the deck down and move away slowly with the copped playing cards that's kind of more of just an afterthought on, on something that you can do that just looks pretty to a slight of hand artists with the top cop thanks for spending all this time with me go back and watch the video before this one the uh the slight of hand exposed video because everything that you see in that introduction i'm going to be teaching in my following videos and i think this was a good way to start that so stay close and if i don't see you before christmas happy christmas and uh, look out for my birthday on the way i'm bringing you a special surprise just for my birthday so stay close don't go too far and i'll see you in the next video i'm donnie madison tyler madison this was top top